KC's Audio Vault. John McRae, lead singer from Cake. We talked December 21st, 2010. Hello. Hello, is this John? Yes, my name is John. Hello, John. This is Casey from Power 97 in Winnipeg. Hi, Casey. How's it going? Good. How about you today? Great, great. Thank you. Am I phoning you at home? Yes, you are. You live in Sacramento? No, actually, I live in Oakland, which isn't too far from Sacramento. It's a little closer to the ocean. And so you're getting lots of phone calls, lots of interviews, getting ready for the cake release? Yeah, yeah, we sure are. It's, uh, it's great. We're having a good time with this one. This is a, our first album that we are releasing on our own label in quite some time. Yeah, I wouldn't imagine this much of a white Christmas where you are. Not exactly where I am, but really close. There's, there's, there's been some sprinkling of snow, maybe an hour or so away. Do you get into the Christmas spirit? Um, uh, 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 my wife does. So she, she puts up the decorations and things. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not. I am okay about it. I, you know, it's. But I'm not. I don't. I don't freak out. <laughs> Are you all set? You have the presents all figured out? No, I'm. I'm working on it. I just got home. I've been on tour for a few weeks since uh, the end of November. So it's. I'm just actually catching my breath right now. Well, we we do only have a, a few more days to figure this I out. I know. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Well, uh, Showroom of Compassion out in a couple weeks. This has been the the longest break between albums for Cake. What uh, what have you been doing? Well, I mean, first of all, we we've been touring for like fifteen years straight, um, and so I think we we needed a, a, a just a little respite. Um, also, we kind of had some work to do. We had to uh, find a way off of our, our, our label deal. It really wasn't working for us, and so we got off of the label and, and started our own label. And what else were we doing? We converted our uh, studio into a solar-powered studio, so it's uh, this new album is 100% solar, uh, electricity-produced album, and... Um, we're really slow um, in the studio, uh, and this time more than ever, in that um, it was a very democratic process, and democracy is painfully slow sometimes. Did you have any contractual obligations with your previous label? Was it, was it difficult getting out of that? Uh, it was not difficult. Well, it, maybe it was a little bit difficult. We, we did have another album that they could have held us to, but um, I think we found a, you know, an amicable way forward, and uh, I think that it was a difficult interface between our culture and the, the corporate record company culture. It was um, not the easiest uh, marriage. Now, with building your own solar-powered studio, how much was that on your shoulders, or did you contract this out to uh, knowledgeable folks? Oh, yeah, we, I mean, we we hired a, a company that does it all the time, and it was really easy. It took a couple of days, and it was, there's really nothing to it. And especially right now with the world recession, um, the price of, of making that jump has really uh, declined, I think, by about 30 or 40%. So if you have uh, any money, which is like not very many people do right now, but if you do... Prices have gone down steeply. Now, have you done this with your own home? Uh, yes, yes, I have. And um, I, with my own home, I found this uh, this thing called onebog.org, like number one, bog.org. And what they do is they aggregate all the people like in your town that want to go solar. They get all the people's names together, and they say, hey, we've got 800 people that want solar, and they go around to different businesses and say, well, what, what price can you give us? Instead of getting the price for one person going solar, they get the price for 800 So it's a pretty great thing. And you, you can just you know go online and sign up, and then when they get enough people, they will get you the lowest price possible. Now, I'm, I'm kind of imagining Ed Begley Jr.'s house, because he had that TV show a while back. Is it, do you have other energy-saving devices in your house? Um, 
Well, you know, the, the biggest bang for your buck is just to insulate like hell. When we insulated, um, we, there was insulation in our, in our attic, of course, but it was, you know, maybe 15, 20 years old, and the, 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 the effectiveness of insulation has gone up amazingly in the last uh, 10 years, and so that was an amazing transition. Like, we don't even need to use our heater very much. I mean, obviously, we're in Northern California, which is not as cold as where you are, but I think that's the cheapest, most effective thing anyone can do. Now, if you have extra energy, like, say, with your solar panels at the studio, yeah, do you get a credit for that? Do you get money back if you're making more than you're using? Well, yeah, you get credit. If, if you... I got to say, I'm a big fan of publicly run utilities. Um, there's no profit that has to be shared with shareholders. And so, I mean, and, I, and I've paid for electricity in two towns, one public and one private. And holy cow, there's a huge difference in terms of just the cost that you're, what you're charged, number one. But also, you actually tend to get money back um, the Cake Studio is in Sacramento, where they have a public utility, and I and I don't I live in, on, with a private utility, and it's just night and day in terms of if you have a publicly owned utility, you actually get like money, and um, the private utility, which is a PG and E here, find all kinds of ways of charging you extra stuff, and it's they make it not as as good as it should be. <laughs> but I will say. As the value of recorded music sinks into the toilet deeper and deeper, Cake is still going to get a twenty-five or thirty-dollar check every month from the utility. Well, that's good. If you're if you're not getting cash from the music, you get cash from the studio. Yeah, it's going to keep us afloat through the hard times. Did you see the uh, lunar eclipse last night? Did you get a good yes, view? Yes, we did. Yeah, I mean it was a little cloudy here and there, but the, every once in a while the clouds would drift out of the way, and it was pretty great. Did you see it? No, it was it was fully cloudy and snowing last night, so we, we got screwed out of the deal. Ah, sorry to hear that. I mean, it wasn't that great, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Are you a big fan of uh, researching, looking up outer space, like the, the, the technology with solar power? Is, is that kind of what you do on your spare time, just kind of nerd out? Um, no, not, not just that, but I mean, a lot of things. I, I guess I'm interested in... Uh, sort of trying to be aware of what's going on around me and if it's if that's in the sky or maybe it's in the uh the fact that the world is running out of oil or things like that i just sort of like to try to stay current on what's going on and uh i find it interesting uh if not a little frightening um california where i live is uh getting really low on water and uh, i'm i'm interested to see what will happen in the next 10 or 20 years is there a way to, like, a home purification? Can you be self-reliant on water the same way you can be with energy? Yeah, I think, I think you can, as long as there's some water. Um, you know, if, if it ends up, you know, the weather patterns shift in a way where, you know, there's absolutely no water for five or ten years, I think that we're, you know, that could pretty much dust us out. But, um, but yes, you know, that um, honestly... Um, there's houses in the middle of the desert in Utah that have rainwater collection, which is pretty great. Um, and it just basically you have a metal roof. Uh, all the water um, comes off of the roof down through a filter and into a cistern that's underneath the house. So you have this you know, clean water that is at your disposal when you need it. And if you have a big enough tank, um, it's probably enough to last you. Going back to the, to the album... Showroom of Compassion. Now, have you mapped out what you guys are uh, planning on touring throughout North America for 2011? Um, yeah, we're getting there. We're figuring it out. We've we got, like, maybe the first half of the year figured out. Um, we're just actually right about in June, July, trying to figure out what we're going to do then. But, um, yeah, it's going to be a pretty busy year for us, uh, it looks like. But, you know, we we like this album, and we really want to promote it, and let people know about it. No, besides it becoming, I think you said, more democratic of, a, okay. of an album and it being solar-powered, anything different with this uh, cake disc? Um, 
for years I didn't want uh, acoustic piano on any of our albums because I thought I just thought it sounded too classy. On this album, I allowed acoustic piano on the album. I don't know why, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I guess there's one there's one spot on one of the albums way back where where I let there be an acoustic piano. But for the most part, I had a moratorium. And on this album, I don't know. I just maybe I just felt differently about it this time. And the other thing, um, on all of our other albums, I never allowed reverb uh, on my voice. Um, I just thought it sounded too grandiose. When we first uh, released our first album, uh, Motorcade of Generosity, uh, so many years ago, I just kind of wanted it to, to sound small. Everything at that time was trying to sound really big and and grandiose, and I just thought, you know what? That's enough. And so uh, so for a long time, I just... I just didn't want to have anything to do with reverb. And on this album, there's actually a couple songs or so um, where, where you hear my voice uh, with reverb on it. So it may not, never happen again. So we'll see how it goes. Any remorse yet? Like after? No, I'm okay about it. I think it's okay. I think I, enough time has passed. I feel like it's okay. Well, I appreciate you uh, taking some Christmas shopping time out of your day and uh, oh. d- talking to us way up in the uh, Great White North. Yeah, thank you for taking that Christmas shopping time out of my day. <laughs> and uh, hopefully maybe uh, Kate can tour their way through the Canadian prairies in 2011. I would love to visit that area. And uh, I, unfortunately, I probably wouldn't have any time to look around. But if we do, maybe, yeah, that sounds like a great place to visit. Well, John, thank you so much again, and uh, Showroom of Compassion out in a couple weeks. We'll be uh, looking for it in stores and uh, iTunes, too. Thank you so much, sir. All the interviews you want on iTunes and at Power97.com. Casey's Audio Vault. Casey Norman is Power97's music director and can be heard every weekday from 2 till 6 in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Power97 is Winnipeg's best rock.